Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be installing the front coilover kit of a Tesla Model Y by Max Speeding Rods. And so if you remember in the last video, we actually installed the rear coilover kit. And so today it will be the front. So if you haven't checked it out already, make sure you uh, watch that video of the uh, installation of the rear coilover kit and um, the video that we have uh, for the unboxing of the T6 coilover kit by Max Speeding Rods for a Tesla Model Y. And again, this, this kit is also available for a Model 3, so make sure you check out their website, and I'll leave a link down in the description um, down below so for you guys to check it out for yourself. But before we get started, we need to remove uh, most of the paneling here in the uh, front area. So this panel back here, including the tub for the um, front, so we can expose some of the, the bolts that are up here holding the uh, entire strut assembly for the new coilover. <laughs> With all the panels out and then the, the tub here for the front, we have um, access to the bolts that we need to remove that hold the entire strut assembly. So these bolts right here, this one, this one, this one right here, and then there's one on the other side of the uh, windshield wiper filler that's back in right in there. So, and then on the other side, Kind of the same thing. We got a bolt here, here, one back there, and then one on the side over here. So, but in order to do the passenger side, you actually also have to remove this um, vent here for your HEPA filter. <laughs> Okay, now we have the wheel removed. So we gotta disconnect a few things um, underneath here. And so we're gonna start off with taking out these uh, little fasteners here that are attached for the uh, brake line and speed sensor, followed by we're going to remove the, um, the bolt and nut right here that holds the upper control arm then we're going to go down below to access the bolt right there. And then the nuts just on the other side over here, right over there to be able to remove the entire existing strut assembly.
Okay, we have the uh, sway bar link disconnected. So really everything is unbolted. We can just hopefully we just pull this uh, whole strut assembly out. <laughs> There we have it guys. It took a little bit to pull out of there, but uh, we got it out. So what we have to do next is actually transfer this uh, top section with the upper control arm over to the new coilover. And um, that should be pretty easy to do actually. So there's only, there's three bolts that hold this in place and that's it. You do not have to take out the bolts for the upper control arm. Leave those in place. Just need to remove the three bolts on the top. So here we have the existing strut up against the new coilover. See the difference here. Um, and then of course we have that top section that we need to transfer over to the new coilover. But the overall thing I wanted to point out is go ahead and set the overall height that you want the car to sit at. So basically just line up the holes down here at the bottom and then go ahead and place the overall coil over where you want it to sit. And I have it sitting about half inch um, below the existing. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's about half inch. So that's kind of where I have everything set. Um, remember from last video, we had the uh, rear sitting at a half inch and it's settled down about that. So we're good there. And so all we have to do is just bolt on this upper section here to the new coilover. And we're gonna tighten down those three nuts that we removed um, at 17 foot pounds. Okay, so we have the uh, coilover ready to go back in the, in the vehicle, or at least a new one. So in my opinion, this is probably the hardest part about this entire job here. Um, and it's just because, you know, I don't know, it's a tight fit. But um, just have a lot of patience, take a break <laughs> or whatever I had to yesterday when I did the other side. But um, either way, um, get a jack ready because we're going to have to lift this up just like how we did it in the rear. But either way, let's go ahead and get this in place and get it all bolt it up and see how it looks.
As you can see here, I place a bottle jack under, underneath the lower control arm. That way I can lift the coilover kit up into place, which makes it easier to line up the bolts and the holes from underneath. So that way you can line it up um, underneath and then place the bolts in, in the, its appropriate location. And so now all we're gonna do is tighten everything down and uh, of course, tighten everything down to spec. Okay, so here's a tip on installing the sway bar links. You want to actually jack up both sides of the vehicle evenly. So I have a couple of jack stands here on both sides and they're at the same height. And you want to do that because the sway bar already has some preloaded tension on it um, coming from the factory. So when you disconnect the old sway bar link, you know, right in here, you're releasing all that preload. So in order to get that uh, corrected, you need to jack up the vehicle evenly up in the front. Now you don't have to jack up the back, just make sure you're evened out on the, f on the front. That way, when you're setting the new sway bar links, they're on the same uh, preload. And if you don't do this, what you'll end up having is a bunch of popping noise coming from the sway bar link and the sway bar. So, and it's quite annoying, especially when you start turning or going, hitting a little bump, um, you'll notice that uh, popping or clunking noise um, if they're not installed correctly. Okay, so that's it. Everything under here, everything's torqued down the spec. We torque down the bolts at the top on the uh, front side at 17 foot-pounds. We tighten the ball joint bolt here for the upper control arm at 45 foot-pounds. And then the large bolt down at the bottom, tightened at 75 foot-pounds. All right, guys, she's done. All four corners are installed. Again, this is the T6 coilover kit by Max Speeding Rods. And um, it looks good. Dropped it about half an inch. I actually did the uh, rear first um, about a week ago and now completed the front. So probably need to let the front settle down a little bit, but the rear has been has been settled down and it's sitting at right at 29 and a half inches from the bottom of the fender to, to the ground. So um, the front is almost there, but uh, this is how it looks. I mean, it closed up that gap a little bit and it looks pretty good. Again, this is a look at the rear. And so that's been about a little bit over a week now um, and then putting some mileage on it. So that gap is, is looking pretty good. And then the front over there um, actually did that one yesterday. 
the one in the front, passenger front. So um, it's settled down pretty nicely. And um, overall, overall like the height. It looks really nice. Now, not gonna lie, I did struggle with the front a little bit. Um, the first go around on the passenger front, but the driver's side front is was was a lot better um, after figuring out how to how to do it. The rear was okay though. Um, that went a lot faster than the front. So I need to drive around a little bit. You know, a week is is actually pretty good um, before I start adjusting everything, making sure the um, shocks are adjusted the way I want it to want it meaning um, as far as soft and or how hard that ride is. And then, you know, just making sure everything is, you know, not making any noises. I did hear something yesterday, so I need to get that adjusted. But overall, overall it was doable. Um, definitely a DIY does take a little bit more than DIY, but uh, I did it. And um, really just need to, to check out how it's gonna be in the next week or so. and um see how the alignment is it seemed okay in the rear after a week so we'll see how it is now with the front um, before we decide to get it um, aligned um, but i mean overall it seems okay but of course you know good practices to get an alignment done after a suspension upgrade so with that guys hope you guys found this helpful um, and if you liked the video make sure you hit that thumbs up button so We'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.